Be with us on SABC's Prime News. And of course, uh, a lot of our news interrupted tonight. We were hearing from the EFF leader, Julius Malema, on the ground in the Eastern Cape ahead of that much anticipated motion of no confidence in the mayor, Athel Trollope. Tomorrow, we spoke to the Patriotic Alliance that says it will stand with the DA. Athel Trollope will stay. The EFF says it wants him gone. Before uh, we continue with the news, a quick uh, uh, recap, therefore of tonight's top stories. In a groundbreaking first, a former real estate agent Vicky Momberg behind bars tonight for her racist slurs. A horror crash in the Eastern Cape claims 13 lives, among them four children. In sporting action, disgraced Australian batsmen Steve Smith and David Warner get a 12-month ban each and are kicked out of this year's IPL. All right, and we'll also take you live to Durban as soon as we can, where three people have been killed after a building collapsed there. Right now, I hand you over to Bongani. Well, tomorrow, newly elected Free State Premier Sisin Dombela will be inaugurated in Mangawung. At the same time, it's being reported that a lavish farewell party is planned for her predecessor, ANC Secretary General S. Mahashule. He is also accused of being involved in a dodgy housing project to ensure that a company partly owned by his daughter scored a contract with the Provincial Department of Human Settlements. News 24 investigative journalist Peter Louis Mayberg broke the story. He joins us now right here in studio. But before we have that, that conversation, let's take a look at the Deputy President David Mabuza's response on the matter in Parliament. As leaders, we must use the very little resources that we have correctly. So probably we will understand from the leadership of a Free State now that you have raised this matter, we'll, we'll inquire what is the what is the what is the rush about a party. Well, you can you can still do without a party. Well, I'm here. I'm here. I didn't have a party uh, at home, but I'm still surviving because we don't have money. Uh, Probably uh, what we can do, what we can do is to persuade them, is to persuade them in the interest of the public and in the interest of all the challenges that we're facing as a country, to use money sparingly and correctly. Well, Peter Louis Meyerberg, good evening and thank you for joining us here in the studio. We'll talk in a moment about uh, the lavish party that's uh, planned for tomorrow. But you've made some damning allegations of your own. Yeah, Shabangani, we, we reported today on a housing contract, actually a collection of housing contracts that were dished out by the Department of Human Settlements in the Free State uh, to a company called Unital Holdings. Um, and a little bit of digging um, led us to, to learn that the 30% shareholder in Unital is in fact the daughter of um, <coughs> outgoing Premier Ace Magashule. It's a, a young business lady, a businesswoman called Tokomo Lembe. Um, and in short, her company clinched his contracts with about 150 million rand to construct about a thousand RDP houses outside Bethlehem in the Free State. Now, Esma Khashule will obviously say that he doesn't necessarily decide who gets uh, what tenders, what contracts. He doesn't dish out uh, any procurement, uh, you know, for the department in the Free State. Yeah, sure. Look, in, in the past, that, that that's always been the kind of the standard response from officials uh, caught in these kind of uh, scandals. Um, we see the classic arms length um, explanation. We've seen it with President Jacob Zuma and his sons' dealings with the Guptas and so on. Um, but in this case, unfortunately, um, there's a very detailed trail of evidence that points to Premier Magashule's very direct and real involvement in the process. What's um, your smoking gun? Um, we, re we reported on meetings that were convened at the Premier's office in Bloemfontein in about 2014, um, which the Premier also attended himself. Um, some other officials from the Provincial Department of Human Settlements attended. And in that meeting, it was decided um, that the Dishlabeng municipality needed to terminate the, the contract they already had in place with another company to build the RDP projects in order to make room for this company called Unital Holdings. Um, kind of the second leg that the story stands on is the fact that it was Premier Magashule um, 
who himself brought this company to Bethlehem and introduced uh, the the company's principal and uh, the partner of his daughter in the company, um, Mr. Jinjiang Li, to the locals, telling them that this would be the individual who was going to build them houses uh, that they needed. So, um, in, in, in this instance, the Premier's fingerprints are all over the deal. Can the Premier say that, uh, you know, in his capacity as the leader of the province, he would have visited these sites? You've got photographs uh, of him at a number of these sites promising houses would he not say that that's part of what a premier does as the political leader in that province? He doesn't get involved in all the <coughs> details necessarily, mm. but a few photographs don't make him guilty. Yeah, no, certainly. I mean, that, that's always going to be the, it's, it's, it's good to play the devil's advocate and, and be grilled on these kind of things, but the unfortunate reality for, for the premier in this situation is once again that there is this detailed paper trail pointing to his involvement in the matter. Um, there's an ongoing court case, for instance, um, that's kind of the origin of one part of the story where the incumbent contract whose contract was subsequently terminated in, in, very, um, in, in very detailed claims um, lays out how the Premier basically put pressure on the, the um, municipality, to, uh, municipality to get rid of them so that there could be room for um, the Premier's da uh, daughter's company. Do we have statements from the Premier? Do we have signed uh, documents uh, that uh, support what you're saying? Yeah, so all of, all of this is contained in court documents which um, it, uh, is uh, supported by um, um, you know, supporting documents uh, filed in the court papers. Um, so once again, there, there's a very clear paper trail hinting back to the, the Premier's office. So take us through the trail then of what you allege. You're saying 70 million mm. rand was paid to this company to do what? Yeah, so they were pointing to, um, it's a, a development called Vogelfontein, uh, to the north of, of Bethlehem and they were basically, uh, first it, it was a kind of a staggered process, there were three phases, um, they were pointed to uh, build 500 houses and then another 500 and then a remaining 50, uh, so it's 1,050 houses. Um, so they were paid uh, for, um, at, at this point it seems that the department paid them 70 million rand, this is confirmed by the, de the department itself and a added um, sort of dimension of the story and the problem is the fact that there's a discrepancy between how many houses Unitel actually completed. Um, the department doesn't seem to be sure of its own figures. It first supplied me with a figure of 630 completed houses. Um, then it backtracked and said it was about 540 or something. And then I obtained a report that detailed there's only about 200 completed houses. So there's an added issue about the, the number of houses that were actually finished. And one of the things your expose suggests is that even of those completed houses, Many of them are of a poor standard. Yeah, yeah Bongan, it's, it's not really even suggestions. It's, it's been confirmed. Um, I went down to the, the project and I was able to photograph houses, um, all of the houses, in fact, uh, which aren't connected to a sewage system at all. Um, this has now forced the locals who, who have moved in there to, to use pit toilets that they constructed for themselves. Um, they make use of holes that were dug by the municipality for them. They were instructed to, to dump the human waste in those holes. Um, the houses aren't connected to electricity. The houses aren't connected to water. There are no thawed roads. In short, the very lofty vision for a all-encompassing human settlement that Magashuli sold the, le the residents back in 2012 and 2013 has completely fallen flat. You also say that initially there were attempts to hide the identity of uh, Toko Malemba, who is of course the Premier's daughter. Yeah, once again, just another sort of factor, you know, considering uh, Magashuli's involvement in all of this is when he arrived on the scene with this uh, Mr. Lee, the supposed Chinese company that they appointed, and this was touted as a Chinese company, um, there was never any uh, clear sort of trace of Malembe's um, involvement in the company. She did attend one or two meetings with council, was been able to establish, but certainly she wasn't kind of introduced to the community as one of its principals. Um, and there's also documents uh, by the Department of Unis Human Settlements which lists Unital as a 100% Chinese company. Um, we then were able to uh, obtain the, the shared uh, uh, documents of this company, um, and it indicates that Malembe, the Premier's daughter, is a 30% shareholder. But surely the Premier's daughter can do uh, business with the province? The Premier's daughter can do business with the province if her father doesn't play a very direct role in ensuring that the, channel, that the contracts from the, the um, uh, province's coffers are channeled to his own daughter. That's nepotism and corruption. So in the context of what you're exposing then, what are your thoughts around uh, the alleged 20 million rand that is said to be spent on a farewell party for the outgoing Premier and uh, an inauguration for the one who's coming in? Yeah, look, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, it's been a province that for a number of years has had serious questions 
hanging over its head um, in terms of its expenditure decisions. We know about the Makufe Cup that it hosts annually in Bloemfontein where millions of rands of taxpayers' money that could have gone to proper housing developments have been channeled into these kind of festivals and now we've learned of yet another example where a lavish celebration is going to slip up about 20 million rand of taxpayers money well the ANC has uh, for its part said that there will be investigations and that the law must take its course uh, we did invite them to join us this evening for this discussion and of course as always this platform remains open for them to give their right of reply stay with us we'll have more for you after this quick break